video might offend some people, so if you don't like guns, please do not watch this video. I'm not trying to be offensive. I know I have both Republicans and Democrats. But I wanted to give more on an insight on what the constitutional carry is. Uh, one person commented on my poll saying, uh, does that mean you don't need a uh, permit to carry um, the weapon? Uh, and we're just, we'll just read this, okay? We'll read this uh, story here right off of the Texas Tribune. All right, so House Bill 1927 would nix the requirement for Texas residents to obtain a license to carry handguns if they are not prohibited by state or federal law from possessing a handgun. Texans under current state law must generally be licensed to carry handguns either openly or concealed. The Texas House has approved a bill that would allow handguns to be carried without a permit, making a win for gun right activists who have for years pushed the measure at the legislature, but a blow to the El Paso Democrats who have been fighting for gun safety measures since the 2019 massacre in their hometown. Initial approval came Thursday in an 84 to 56 vote after several hours of some of the most emotionally charged debate yet this legislative session, with Democrats pleading to their colleagues to reconsider their position on the legislation. The House on Friday gave the legislation a final stamp of approval, sending it to the Senate where the bill's fate is less clear. House Bill 1927, spearheaded by state Rep. Matt Schaefer, uh, Republican Tyler, Texas, I guess, would nix the requirements for Texas residents to obtain a license to carry handguns if they are not prohibited by state or federal law. From In other words, if you're mentally ill, you're not going to get a gun. Um, if you're a felon, you're not going to get a gun, and you're not supposed to carry. Texans under current state laws must generally be licensed to carry handguns either openly or concealed. This bill should be called the Common Sense Carry, Schaefer said. Uh, as he laid out the bill Thursday, he described a scenario in which two women, one who had time and resources to obtain a license to carry and another who did not, went for walks in different neighborhoods, arguing that the latter did not feel safe or well-equipped to protect their family. Seven Democrats voted for the bill. What? Seven Democrats voted for the bill. I'm shocked. According to the unofficial vote total, Terry Canal Canales of Edinburgh, who was a joint author, Ryan Gilliam of Rio Grande City, another joint author, Harold Dutton of Houston, Richard Benya, uh, Raymond of Laredo, Tracy King of Batesville, I know I've been to Batesville, Leo Pacheco of San Antonio, and Eddie Morales Jr. of Eagle Pass, one Republican, Morgan Mayor of Dallas, voted against it. State Representative Ang Angie Chen Button, Republican, Richard, was present but not voting. Uh, wow, I'm shocked. Uh, early on in Thursday's debate, State Representative Joe Moody, Democrat of El Paso, who serves as Speaker Pro Tempmore, pushed an amendment to the bill that would have effectively killed the legislation. Moody, surrounded by other El Paso lawmakers at the House floor's front make, recalled the day of El Paso's massacre in August of 2019 when a gunman killed 23 people. Moody said there has been no action in the wake of the mass shooting and others to prevent future tragedies. After those shootings, uh, there were roundtable discussions and stakeholder meetings and a lot of promises, and I was hopeful members, even knowing the poli political realities, I was hopeful, Moody said. Members, I'm so tired of doing nothing. When are we going to do something? Moody's proposed change to the bill failed, 63 to 79. Nearly two dozen other proposed tweaks to the bill, to the bill, tweaks to the bill, to the bill, I, I don't know, many authored by Democrats also failed. Permitless carry measures have been filed in the typically more ideologically conservative Senate through that legislation has not yet advanced. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who, had, who heads the Senate, has previously expressed hesitation over the measure, saying in a 27 radio interview that with all the police violence today, we have in our state, law enforcement does not like the idea of anyone being able to walk down the street with a gun and they don't know if they have a permit or not. In the days leading up to the Thursday debate, some law enforcement officers and licensed to carry instructors voiced opposition to the legislation, citing safety concerns. A group of faith leaders and veterans have also criticized the measure. 
During Thursday's debate, State Representative Jeff Kaysen, registered uh, Republican Bedford, Texas, offered an amendment that would have lowered the minimum age for permitless carry from 21 to 18 years. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea, guys. In my opinion, you should not. No, nah, I think 21 is a good, a good to carry. Schaefer and other Republicans voiced opposition to the proposal, and Kaysen's amendment fell overwhelmingly, 12 to 121. Two Democrats, De, uh, Diego Bernal of San Antonio and Rafael Anchia of Dallas, tried on successfully to amend Schaefer's bill to bar domestic blanks or violent blank blank blanks as defined by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security from carrying a handgun without a permit. Uh, uh, okay. Everybody's entitled to carry a gun, lady. Everybody. I think it's always the right uh, time to be talking about denouncing blank blanks and preventing guns from falling into their hands, Anchia said before his proposed amendment failed. Soon after, freshman Democrat Jasmine Crockett of Dallas delivered a tearful speech before laying out an amendment that would have carved out courthouses from the legislation. Other House Democrats rushed to Crockett's side as she stood at the House's front mic. As the only new black member of this body, I must say some of the discussion today has not been eye-opening but hurtful. Crockett said, when I get here, the one thing that everyone told me is that we aren't D.C. We didn't do partisan politics. Can we truly consider some of these amendments and not make them so partisan? Uh, partisan? Her amendment failed 59 to 80. Gun rights activists, face leaders, and gun violence prevention activists sat in the chamber for parts of Thursday's debate, watching as lawmakers on the floor consider legislation. After State Representative uh, Genia Hinosa, I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm not sure, I, even though I, I grew up in a Spanish city. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Gina Hinosa, Democrat of Austin, raised a point of order against Schaefer's bill, which temporarily paused debate but ultimately was overruled. A group of activists wearing all white began singing Amazing Grace. They were quickly escorted out of the House gallery. Sammy Saper contributed to this report. So, in other words, uh, if this does pass the Texas Senate, it might go to the Supreme Court too. It 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 might. I I don't know if it. I don't think it needs to, but I know it goes to go to the governor's desk. Um, so permitless carry is what's going on there. So, uh, I wanted to give you guys more of an update on to what's happening currently in the state of Texas and. Um, a lot of people don't like guns. They don't like these things, man. For some reason, they don't like them. But, you know, sometimes the police... The, see, the problem is, uh, what I was listening to today is, the police are not always going to be there when somebody breaks into your house. See, there's a there's a, a 9 millimeter uh, pistol there. I think that's a Glock, but I'm not 100% sure. Sorry, I'm not good on guns. Definitely a shotgun. Um, but the, the point I'm making is, um, see, the, the, the problem is, is a lot of people don't understand. If somebody's breaking into your house and you have children or they break into an apartment or they break into a house or if they break into a condo and you're by yourself and say you're a lady or something and, you know, they break into your house. I mean, if you don't have a piece with you, a, a firearm, how are you going to protect yourself from somebody that's going to come in? And could possibly kidnap you, especially in Texas. You know, these women, they get kidnapped at, at, at Target. They get kidnapped at Walmart. And if they had a gun with them, then they could shoot the person if they needed to. If they needed to, like I said, maybe scare them. Just all they got to do is brandish it and they would leave and run and not take the woman. Because there's a lot of kidnapping of women down here. A lot of people don't know this that don't live in the state of Texas, but a lot of kidnappings happen. A lot of a lot of the uh, the 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 really bad people uh, from the south of the border, they'll come over and they, they they hire people to kidnap and then take them to Mexico. So this is a good thing for a lot of people. Now, if you're mentally ill, I don't think you should have a weapon. But a, a lot of people are scared of these things, and I don't know why. I, I really just don't understand. If somebody breaks in, you better be ready and packing because I'm not just talking about Texas anywhere. You want to protect yourself and you want to protect your family. And the fastest way is, unfortunately, through these weapons, um, you know. And, and that's just how it has to be. Um, I, I don't know what you guys think. I just want your opinions. 
But in general, if you're going to be doing it for personal protection of your house, uh, of your of your of your property, um, and somebody comes in and breaks in, those police might not be there for 20 minutes. Plus, in some situations, they may not be there for 20, 30 minutes. Especially if you're out in a rural area of Texas, they could be there to take an hour to get to you, depending on the situation. What if they're already caught up in another situation? And if someone's breaking into your house or stealing off your property and you threaten them, you know, you always give them the, the shot in the air or something to scare them off. But, I mean, what, what if you're in your car and they start to come and try to hijack you like they did to me in Mexico? If I, had, if I hadn't uh, run away, I, I would have been, my car would have been carjacked. And I wouldn't be able to pre uh, protect myself because you can't bring firearms into Mexico. Uh, it's, it's, it's really illegal. So, point I'm making is, I don't know why people are so scared of these guns. That, you know, the guns themselves don't hurt people. It's, it's, it's really just, it's just evil people. And remember, even, okay, even if they did take all the guns away, let me just explain. Even, even if they did take all the guns away, um, how would you protect yourself from, from criminals? That will still have the guns. How are you going to protect yourself from the criminals? That will still have guns and the bad people that want to do bad things to people. They, I mean, they could still go into a, a mall and, and start, you know, doing bad things. I mean, even if nobody else has a gun. So if nobody else has a gun, no one's going to be able to protect anybody at that mall or, you know, anywhere. That's why it's always imperative that somebody has a, a, a weapon of some sort if the police are not around in the area. Because you never know when you're going to need it. And that's just my opinion. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm just giving out my opinion. Thank you guys for watching. I hope, I hope this was a little bit informative as it was for me.